we're ready. Logan Spence, my chief of staff, put a lot of work on this, and Caleb, uh, with Phil's staff, would appreciate it. Yeah, Dan, while he's pulling that up, you said there's 56 members of our caucus. Yes. You know, there were 56 people that signed the Declaration of Independence, too. That's a good number, Dan. Good number, Wayne. <coughs> Tea Party Caucus, Texas Legislature. Focusing on how you can be more effective in the Capitol. How can the Tea Party affect the legislative process, Phil? Get your mic working there. Well, you, you can read the overhead, but the most important thing is help is learning with us uh, how the process works, becoming familiar with the issues. Uh, one thing that, that's really struck me in the Tea Party in the last year or so is it's gone from being a very uh, spontaneous, um, loose group uh, to being a, a very matured group of organizations uh, with a very mature understanding of the issues. And, uh, and then you, when we met a few weeks ago uh, with, our, with the uh, Tea Party Caucus groups, uh, I was struck by one, their organizational structure and also their understanding of the issues and it helped us so much when they brought to us and said, here are our five or six key issues, here's what we believe about those and here's what we want you to work on. So uh, uh, learning the issues, learning the process, developing relationships, which is what we're trying to do here today and build some trust. You do have some people that, we, a lot of us feel like we were Tea Partiers before there was a Tea Party. And, uh, and it has, does get lonely sometimes. And so we want to build relationships with you, learn how to work together, get you to help us, uh, help us pass bill, bills in, in partnership, uh, which is marshalling the available resources. And to develop the relationships is important. Um, all of you in this room are involved. But it's important for all of your folks back home to be involved. It's important to know if there's a bill that you support or a bill you want to stop, to know who's on that committee, to contact those people, to contact the chairman of that committee. Uh, it doesn't always help sending out a blanket blast <laughs> to lots of people when maybe six people really are the ones who will be empowered to see that bill pass or stop. So it's important to know who's who, uh, study the committee, study the chairmanships, uh, and know your folks back home to where you can pick up the phone and call your legislator and they know you personally. They know you personally. It makes a big difference. Uh, we get um, thousands of emails during a session. Thousands. And hundreds and hundreds of phone calls. Many from out of state, many from out of our district. It's important that you have a personal relationship um, with your uh, elected officials. Yeah, you know, the first question I always ask when Caleb, my chief of staff, says, we got these three calls about this issue. First question I ask, are they from within the district? Because it just means more to us if we've got a call from our own constituents of people who have been working on our campaigns, telling us what to do, sending us here. And, and all of us, I know, um, Wayne, you would agree, we all um, represent all of Texas, but we represent our district first. And, and you know, I always like to tell people, you can't vote for me, but I can still vote for you. So I take your interest um, at heart and try to represent you, but, I'm, but the people in my district are the ones who are really going to get my attention. And I also would suggest a handwritten letter in this day and time is still important. Handwritten letters are still important. Don't make them five pages. Keep them brief, keep them to the point. But a handwritten letter says you really care. Anybody can sit down and type off something in 30 seconds at the internet and fire it off. Um, so, let's go to the next slide. We all remember this from school, right? <laughs> Logan? I'm a lot of steps to get to this Capitol building here in Washington. Well, I wonder who that sad little scrap of paper is. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill. Well, it's a long, long journey to the Capitol City. It's a long, long wait while I'm sitting in committee. But I know I'll be a law someday. At least I hope I'm pray. That I will, but today I am still just a bill. Gee, Bill, you certainly have a lot of patience and courage. Well, I got this far. When I started, I wasn't even a bill. I was just an idea. Some folks back home decided they wanted a law passed, so they called their local congressman, and he said, you're right, there ought to be a law. Then he sat down and wrote me out and introduced me to Congress, and I became a bill. And I'll remain a bill until they decide to make me a law. 
I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And I got as far as Capitol Hill. Well, now I'm stuck in committee and I'll sit here and wait while a few key congressmen discuss and debate whether they should let me be alone. Oh, I hope and pray that they will. But today I am still just a bill. Is all that discussion and debate about you? Yeah, I'm one of the lucky ones. Most bills never even get this far. I hope they decide to report on me favorably, otherwise I may die. Die? Yeah, die in committee. Oh, but it looks like I'm going to live now. I go to the House of Representatives and they vote on me. If they vote yes, what happens? Then I go to the Senate and the whole thing starts all over again. Oh, no. Oh, yes. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And if they vote for me on Capitol Hill, well, then I'm off to the White House where I'll wait in a line with a lot of other bills for the president to sign. And if he signs me, then I'll be alone. I hope and pray that he will. But today I am still just a bill. Says you should be allowed, the president can still say no? Yes, that's called a veto. If the president vetoes me, I have to go back to Congress and they vote on me again, and by that time you're so By old. that time, it's very unlikely that you become a law. It's not easy to become a law, is it? No, but how I hope and pray that I will, but today I am still just a bill. He signed your bill, now you're a law. Oh, yeah. You haven't seen that since school. No, it's a long time. Well, that's obviously the federal government, but in the state of Texas, we have a very similar process. It's not quite that easy. Let's go to the next slide, uh, Logan. Uh, we have passed out to uh, most of you uh, a copy of everything that has to happen. We're not going to go through every step, but the truth is it's very difficult to get a bill to the governor's desk and have it signed. And there's nothing more frustrating than getting a bill to the governor's desk and ha having it vetoed. Uh, I know I've had a few vetoed. Have you all had? Uh, I had one last session vetoed. It got all the way through the process. Um, let's go to the next slide. Basic steps in the legislative process. First of all, you have to file. And uh, Wayne, why don't you come up and join me? Would you take, uh, join me a little bit on this? And uh, Dan, how about if you go over and join? Fill a little bit because we're just going to kind of talk through this process uh, a little bit. The cartoon character was absolutely right. A lot of bills start with you, start with an idea. You bring us an idea, and we turn it over to what's called ledge council. And ledge council drafts the bill so that the bill is in its proper form, meeting all the various codes that are already on the book. Um, sometimes it can take, how long, Wayne? A couple of weeks? Yeah, at least in, in getting that through the process of trying to get the committee to hear it is the big thing. It's the big thing. And, and for, for example, our bill filing deadline is, January, is March 11th. But Ledge Council has already sent us a note that if they don't have it by February 18th, you're not going to get it out. So it takes two to three weeks. And how many bills are filed? Last session, Bill, do you recall? You no, know, I think it was eight or 9,000 last time. Yeah, eight or 9,000. 12,000. 12,000 then. After all the resolutions, yeah. Yeah, and you think, well, wait a minute, how could it be 12,000? Well, there are 181 of us, 150 House members, 31 senators. Uh, if everyone files 10 bills, you're up to 1,800. Uh, I know one senator has filed 140 bills. So lots of bills. I filed about 50. So lots of bills are filed. Last session, um, I cast 4,779 votes in about two months. Lots of bills, lots of votes. Um, referral to committee. Dan, how, explain how that works on the, on the House side. In the House, what happens is when you file your bill with the chief clerk's office, then he goes into the uh, speaker and uh, his chief of staff's office, and they look at the bill and they determine what committee it most would fit with. And uh, you're, you may not get it in the committee you wanted, 
So uh, if they don't put it in that committee, you can go and challenge them and ask them, and depending on who the speaker is, uh, is whether or not they'll change it. But uh, so it's very important uh, when you're getting that bill referred to what committee it goes to. And the same thing happens in the Senate. Um, we follow a bill. The Lieutenant Governor, who's the President of the Senate, um, decides what committee those bills go to. Most of them are self-identified. But for example, the sonogram bill that we passed out of State Affairs this week in the Senate, uh, two years ago it went to Health and Human Services. This time it went to State Affairs. So it can go to different committees. Um, and obviously, since the Speaker appoints the Chairman, and the Lieutenant Governor appoints the Chairman of the Senate of these committees, there's a lot of influence there. Uh, if I'm the Speaker, the Lieutenant Governor, and, and I've appointed Wayne as the Chairman, and send him over a bill, I might say, hey, Wayne, I appoint you to that committee, remember? Hey, and also, you remember, there's a committee, you mentioned that you're on State Affairs. Yes. State Affairs is, a bill has to be what they call germane. So the health bills will go to the health committees. The agriculture bill will go to the agriculture committee. But if the governor or the speaker or the lieutenant governor got this bill that he really, really, really wants to pass, then it goes to state affairs. Because anything is germane to state affairs. Okay? So that's my sonic grant bill went to state affairs uh, because the lieutenant governor wanted to push the bill, gave me a low number, Senate Bill number 16. And so obviously the speaker, the lieutenant governor have great uh, influence in this process because when they send a bill to the committee, they can also suggest to that chairman um, in a subtle way or not subtle way, I'd like to see this bill move or not move, potentially. So a lot of, lot of influence at that first level. And Dan, also the, at the committee, that is the first point of influence, of opportunity for influence for citizens. Right. Because that's the opportunity, when you know that that bill has been referred to a committee, then that's the time, whereas a personal call to our district, we're going to listen a lot to our constituents, but if we're on a committee and a bill is before the committee, that's very, very much a statewide orientation. And so that's the time, if you know a bill has gone to State Affairs or Health and Human Services, wherever it may have gone, that's the time when you start emailing and calling all the members of that committee, and particularly the chairman, and letting them know that this bill is very, very important to you. And that is your first point of substantial influence from the outside on the process. And by the way, Phil, Phil mentioned that the, especially the chairman. The reason he mentioned especially the chairman is the chairman, if every member of the committee decides they want this bill to pass out of the committee, it's totally up to the chairman as to whether or not that bill will be heard or passed out of committee. So the chairman is the dictator of the committee, regardless of whether everybody else wants it or not. And Wayne and I had that sad experience last session when we were sitting on a committee and uh, Ken was on it as well, and we had some very, very good tax-related legislation. Uh, a lot of bills, in fact, that we had filed uh, that were going to fix some problems, lower some things, do some other things, and we could not ever get it brought up for a vote. If it had been brought up for a vote, it would have passed out of that committee overwhelmingly. Yeah. That's the opportunity where if citizen influence had, been, had come in at that point, it could have made a big difference. Yeah, I had, I had a bill in a committee in the Senate last session. I had the votes in the committee. I had the votes on the floor. The chairman didn't like the bill, didn't let it out. The chairman are very powerful. Gee, I see Jeannie Morrison back. Jeannie, come on up and have a seat. Jeannie Morrison. Representative Morrison, who's uh, carrying our sonic grant bill in the House, uh, House Bill 201. Jeannie, good to have you here. Uh, so it goes to it, it has a committee hearing. It either comes out of committee or it doesn't. And uh, Dan, just because a bill goes to a committee, again, it never has to be heard. That, that's exactly right. That's why it's so very important who that chairman is. And uh, as, soon as, the, as soon as you find out, as Phil was saying, when, who that chairman is, find out who his constituents are, who her constituents are. And they can have an awful lot of influence on making that chairman decide to have a hearing on that bill. So the bill comes out of committee, then we have a committee report. And so on the Senate floor, uh, for example, again, four, almost 5,000 votes I cast last session. The House members would have cast about the same. You know, we've got all these notebooks every morning at our desk. And when we get into <coughs> April and May, where we may be voting on 200 bills a day, and if you're wondering why we're not voting now, well, we have passed out voter ID out of the Senate. We passed out the eminent domain. And hopefully we pass out the sonogram this week. But we have to have committee work. And you have to have public testimony on the bills. And there are so many bills. It takes a while to do the process. So the bills don't get to us really until early, mid-March, April, and then they really start coming out of committees. And so suddenly we have 200 bills on the, on the floor. 